This is Andy Perot for Boxing Social in association with Betfred and I'm delighted to be joined by former British champion and former world title challenger Jason Wellborn over Zoom. Jason, first and foremost, how are you doing, mate? I'm great, man. I'm going as good as I can be at the minute. That's good to hear. And talk some about life in lockdown. How, how have you found it? it obviously, it was a sh obviously it was a shock. Like I me mean, listening to the news, I I won't sit down and listen. But obviously, when the lockdown was covered, I was like, bloody hell. But the first couple of weeks, I enjoyed it because it slowed me down. Because obviously, I was come the new year, I wanted to get get back into the boxing, still keep my business going. Obviously, that that's what's going to make me the money for the next twenty odd years. So I was pushing that and doing that. It was it was giving all right. My strength and conditioning. I was on my boxing hundred and ten percent, and I felt brilliant. I was fighting April, just a little one at Dudley Town until something come up, and um, it just on what was it, on the, my dad's birthday, the eighteenth of March. That's when we heard about this lockdown. On the Friday we got locked down, but it was hard for me to try and through the lockdown. I'll, I'll be honest. I'll be honest. It was. My commitment was obviously my work and my family and keeping safe. You know what I mean? Um, I've done the odd little bits in the garage, but I was motivated enough to like everyone's coming out of the woodwork buying bikes and money. I just, I've just ticked over the work and kept bit, that coming away and just mentally kept strong, basically, like waiting for it to just be over and done with, man. What was you doing meant to kind of keep your mind busy away from obviously your own separate business? We, me, and, me and the wife was going for walks. We were going for a few walks, so I was doing a lot of walking. Obviously, my wife got we got some horses, so obviously we was up the stables a lot of the time. Obviously, there was no one around, so we was taking the horses out, and I'm a professional jockey now. So, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but now it was just like doing little things like that, because it was mainly it's the kids, so we can keep ourselves occupied. But having a three-year-old and a newborn. Yeah. My wife's had to work extra hard, I have, and obviously not having help off the family, like her mum, we've only got her mum really, my dad's 75, He's, he helps out a lot with us, but we ain't, can't leave the kids with him, and I've had to distance myself from my dad, which obviously I'm a bit of a carer for my dad, because losing mum and this and that, he's, it's been really hard from that side with him not seeing your family, like your dad, I'm really close to my dad, you know I mean, I was with my dad when you see me that day, and like, I have to try and keep him strong. And that was the hardest part from us, really, and not having the help. So being up the stables and letting the kids have a bit of a run, it, it, it's mentally affected the kids. And obviously, it, this this really has not seen other children and I'm you know, telling them off all the while. So it, it, that that was the hardest part. But we flew through it, really, the first couple of weeks, the first month with the horses and that. That, that helped us out a hell of a lot. That did, really did. Obviously, we're seeing your know, lockdown restrictions ease now. How have you found like, this last week or two? Yeah, like you say, I've, like you say, I've, this week, this week it's a new week, and I'm thinking, well, things will start open again. So I'm just taking it. I'm just taking it as it comes. Like I'm still in our little routine. The wife goes up and does the horses now, and that I ease back off that now. And obviously, now the work can start pushing, and other things are opening. So. I'm just looking at looking at that light now. Just I'm after another driver, and hopefully the work's going to start picking up in that. Talk about boxing then, Jace. Obviously, you, you said that over the, the course of lockdown, you struggled to motivate yourself. We're seeing gyms are opening back up now, and we can we can see fighters start to get back out to sit to their trainers. When do you think you'll be back in if you haven't already? Back in the gym. Well, to be honest, I'll be back in this week. I'll be back in this week. Hopefully, off uh, I. Uh, I ain't spoke to him back down Richie Gents now. So whether his gyms be opening soon, I don't know. Obviously, I'll be in talks with him. But uh, I've got no fights lined up or nothing yet. No fights lined up. We've been in talks. We've been in apps. But there's nothing what really gives me that motivation at the minute. But we've been in talks with some, something else this week. So whether we have some big news this week, just go away for contracts to come through or whatever. So I'm just... Just gonna aim to get back on it, nice and steady this week, and break myself in. What's going to will, will be at middleweight. Like my last two fights at light middle, fair enough. I'm gonna turn down a world title, but it was hard to make that weight. But I thought I'd done well, and I felt strong in there up until like the few little low blows, and then I lost my head, and I threw that, I threw a right, and I fell onto the shot. 
but up until then I felt good. So when when we had the the Mac half light middle, there were really no offers, and I thought, well, it's a title, we'll get for it. But uh, making the weight, and I do weight pro- I do my weight properly, like, and um, whether it's I'm getting older and I'm filling out more, and I'm just I'm better at middle. But nothing come up mid- at middle, and it's been near enough twelve months now with a lockdown and I a fought. So we've had opportunities at middle. So if these ones do come off, I think that's the road where I'm going to go out at this stage in my career. And I've just got to think of myself and my career and my age and what I can do at middle. I, I mean, I, I lost at middleweight. I was, I, was a, I was a threat at middle. And after the Langford fights and that, I, f- I felt good at middle. Marcus Morrison, I bet some prospects. And when, when I take my strength into that ring, I'm a different fighter. And um, that's what I've got to take now. I've got no, I've got no chances like. But uh, with the Macarf, it was more of the boxing scene. I hated it. It's when them low blows come and he hit me like up against them ropes. I'm like, I watched it back the other day. I was that angry about the sport. I, I got up and I, I thought, you know what? I don't need this sport. You know what I mean? The, the petty money and this and that. I thought, you know what? For a Commonwealth title, I can earn more than that in a in a month, in a, in a week, some weeks. You know what I mean? So it, I ain't doing the boxing. I could walk away now and I'm happy. I'm comfortable. My house, you mean? I'm literally financially set. I don't need the boxing, but I love boxing. I love to fight, and when I'm in that camp, I'm mentally strong. Um, everything works better when I'm boxing. Obviously, when you're off training <laughs> and you're drinking and bits and but you can see how boxes go off the rail. But I ain't gonna come back now thinking all oh, paydays. I don't need the paydays, and I've sat down with my wife. And if the right fights come up and at middleweight, and there's something to gain and something what I do want. I will go for it, and you will see a good side. You, uh, you'll see the best side of Jason Melbourne when I'm, I'm mentally, and I have been in this position before where I've had brilliant sponsorship for the last three or four years through Dime Ways Construction Dean. He helped me out to get me where I am and get me the big fights. But um, I'm in a good position now to do it for me. Uh, but, um, it's just the short notice fights. I ain't going to be I need eight weeks. Like now, I need eight weeks full camp. And um, you'll see the best of me, and we'll progress on that. But um, I'm re- I'm ready now. I'm ready to like get back on it. A couple of things that you said there, which I want to pick up on, and we'll start off with kind of your remaining ambitions in the sport. You said that you obviously you don't need a, you don't need boxing anymore. You're just doing it because you love it. You know, you you've got a love for the sport. But what do you still want to achieve in boxing? What do you feel you can still achieve? To be honest, yeah, I've like, British. I've done the British. If 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 that come up again now, it, it, I've done it. I've, I've won it and I've defended it. You know what I mean? I went and boxed on the highest you can box, like Jared Erd. It was, you know what I mean? So I've boxed the highest level. I'd like to win, like say, a Commonwealth title. I ain't more than a Commonwealth. I, obviously, I fought for it, McCuff at the right way, but my head went after that fight. And I was in it. I was, I was in it, really. Like My hand went in the second round. Like I was just saying, I watched it back the other day and I was disgusted with what happened and that made me hate the sport. So when I come out of that point, I don't want to box. So I'm thinking, why am I doing this? I had my skips and everything going on at that time, which was stress. It was a very stressful time, just setting up the skips. It was stressful. But to, I did want to win that uh, Commonwealth title. So I said to my wife, she loves that belt. I'm going to get you that belt. So I felt bad about that. But um, if I could win the Commonwealth, I know it's a, it's, it's a belt, it's a top fight. If I could win the Commonwealth, you might European, I saying I'm going to win a world title. But, I know I could probably with the with the camp and that I'd put on a really good fight at world world title. If not win it, you never know. But I just need that bit of push now and I need a little bit of help from some promoters to get me these big fights. Um, so a nice win my next fight. And then we can look at the like a European or a world title shot, you know what I mean? That's and then I'd go out on a high there and I can say, right. Thank the sport instead of giving out the sport out after my last fight and eating, eating everything. You know what I mean? That's how I, that's how I feel. That's why come January we got back in the gym and um, my wife was giving, you need to go out properly, not after your last fight because she you know how frustrated I was like. And uh, I was in agony like after them low blows. And uh, I also thought, you know what? If that was me and the other way, that's the only people who've got me. Liam Smith. <laughs> These are the only bad bad fights what have got me 
the bad losses, which two weeks notice, William Smith, no disrespect, we've had a few bits and bobs and talking over internet, but he is a good fighter, but I had a camp for him. And um, when, he, I, when you have two weeks notice, when I'm working scaffold and I pack my job in, and people don't see that side of the boxing, so when they try and slate you and do this and that, when it was a low blow, and I'm just thinking there's like been a few fights like that. So it's, I just want to go out on a high and I think there's a lot more in the tank with me. And uh, that's what keep pushing me back into the boxing. I could just say now, well, I don't want to fight. I get my work, I can push my work forward and grow my business and just, be, just, just have a chilled life. But I'm choosing to get back in that ring one way or another this year. Just to touch on that Metcalf fight, because it's something I wanted to ask you about, and you've spoken about it a few times now. When those yeah. those come out, I was obviously at the fight, I was covering it. Yeah. How come you didn't decide to take, you know, the break in the corner and you decided to come straight back out? I was just, I was angry. I was angry, like, because it was, it was, it was, whether he had a bad hand, he, we, we knew he had a bad hand or something coming into the fight, he had an injury. But um, I think the second end, my hand, my hand started and I couldn't jab, so I wasn't jabbing. But I was just walking him down. I thought, yeah, right, yeah, he, like, he wore out to me and this and that. And I was walking on. And um, ever you get injuries. But the thing was, he kept tapping low. And I was thinking, I know what he's doing. He, he's, he's tapping low. He's getting frustrated. But then the ref was seeing it. The ref was seeing this. And when I watched it back, I'm in the fight. So I know what I, I was thinking of. And I was looking, I'm thinking, he's tapping down, he kept going, keep him up, keep him up. He was telling him to keep him up, keep him up. Yeah. But after it, it got a bit low, he said, I eat him low, and then eat me low. And it just got like, it got, got pathetic. It was a pathetic fight. It was like, it, and then when he'd done that, what, when I turned on the ropes and I looked at and he was like, boom, 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 boom. About five or six shots in the nuts. And then I took the count, my balls was in my stomach, I'm in agony. And then they show you the obviously hit me round, he hit me round here, and the pain just shot down into my groin area. And then I, my head went. I thought, you know what, Kerry? And I, I get up. I literally get up. I thought, you know what, Kerry? This. Why should I put a good fight on for these when I'm just being dirty like and one-sided? And that's how it felt. And I, I don't want to feel like that with boxing. We all know what boxing goes on the ins and outs of boxing, but um, it shouldn't be like that. Like, and that's why I don't want to play it after that fight. Obviously, 34 now, Jace. How much longer do you feel you do have left in the sport? I've got another good... Well, you can just keep giving. But like you say, I said to myself, 34, 35, I want to retire. I want a few good fights now. And I just want to prove to what I can do at that middleweight. And then just go through that division. Whether we box for another world title. I've proved, I can, I'm, proved I'm at that level. You know what I mean? It was, it was just a fall and... A bit frustrated, that's what i got to work on. When I get frustrated in the ring, and then I go, like, wild. That's what I can't. And at that level, I pick up on that. They might tap you low, they might tap, 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 out, do them openings, then boom, I've got you. And that's, that's, what we, that's what I've got to work on if I want to get to that level. But uh, I've had a taste of it. I've had a taste of it. And um, that's what I want to do. And that's what, I, that's what I want to do. I'm in it to win a world title. But it's one, one step at a time. Are there any names in particular that you'd like to fight? No, at middleweight, at middleweight. Now, you know what? I've lost with the boxing. Who, who's out there now at middle? Top level, top level, world champions. You know what I mean? Them, I mean, you got what Golovkin and there. You know what I mean, some massive names. But you know, I ain't gonna names. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, I've got to think Jay Warburton from the Black Country. I've got BCB the back on me to prime me. I'm doing the best. Um, I've got Genty, who I've bought in. I've employed Genty now to push my training, give me that spark. No disrespect to BCB, it was the training and that, and family, man. You know, I've been there from a kid, and uh, we've grew up together, and like you say, we've got, we've got a relationship. So for me to make that move, it was a big step, but it was a step where I need a bit of a spark to make me love the sport a bit. Because after that point, you start looking back, and you, people blame the trainers and blame that. It, it wore nothing to do with that. All it was, I'm just, I'm like an old dog. I need, I need a little, that bit of click back. And I got it. I was up against it for two weeks and I got the love back for boxing and he, he got it, he got it there. And like, there's some fresh kids coming up, Danny Ball, Connor. And um, 
it was nice doing other little things. It was like back back to back to learning again, and that that's what I needed. So uh, hopefully you might see the difference in my in my next fight. Obviously with some new trainers on, on under the under the under the belt, like. Final thing, Jace, before I do let you go, um, just away from yourself. Last week we had the announcement that uh, Anthony Joshua and Tyson Fury had agreed a deal in principle over financial terms to two bouts in 2021. When you heard the news, what was your thoughts? Yeah, I was buzzing, man. Everybody wants to see that fight, man. I'm a big Fury fan, like you know what I mean. It's um, and he's doing it. Whatever he whatever he does, he gets the win. You know what I mean? And um, his motivation, he's the same. Like when he comes out of the boxing, his lifestyle, like he's earning millions now and he deserves it. He, des- he deserves it, man, for what he's been through and he's come back and he, he, uh, he beats the best. And uh, it'll be a fury win. I think, I, I, I hope to God anyway, but I'm just, look, I'm going to fight, I'm going to make that fight. And like two big fights, you see a lot of people ducking and diving with fighters and getting the road. They're going to do it and uh, it, it, it's nearly there now and that'll, I'll be a fight where I'll, I'll be, wherever it is, I'll be there. Like, Jason, final word to yourself. What would you like to say to everyone who watches our interview today? Just want to say thanks to everyone, and um, obviously the boxing scene's back on now, and um, things can start motivating. And just everyone keep safe still, and just crack on and keep mentally strong. Jason, it's been a pleasure to catch up with you. I'll hopefully see you in person soon to do an interview. But thank you as always for giving up some time and speaking to Boxing Social. Mm. No worries, bro, man. No worries. Thank <laughs> you.